Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use a menu bar in PyQt5. So a menu bar is something that usually comes with the QMain window, which you will open up by default. Then here you have this menu right here. So this is a menu bar. So when you press on it, you have these menu items and you can see for each one of these, we have different sets of actions. So you've obviously seen this in multiple applications. If you've used even the most basic applications ever, like Notepad, you can see that you will always have this file, edit, view, things like that. So I'm going to show you how you can create them. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create keyboard shortcuts. So you can see right here that this save has a keyboard shortcut of Control plus S, which is pretty common when you're using text editors or things like that. And finally, I'm going to show you how you can associate each one of these guys with a different action. And then this action will be associated with a function that gets called when it's clicked. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, if I press on save right now, you can see that here, save was clicked was printed. So this goes to show that our um, action, which is the save one, is connected to a function that when save is clicked gets triggered and it prints out save was clicked. Now, obviously, when you're building more complex applications, such as a text editor, you would then have a different function for save. It wouldn't just print something. You would open up maybe a file, um, a file dialog, uh, select a file name and then save your file. So that's a whole other story. This is for a separate video, but for now, what we're going to do, we're going to see how we can create this menu bar, create these menu items, add shortcuts, as well as add different functions related to these menu items. All right, so without further ado, let's just get started. So I'm just going to close this guy right here. Let's just ignore this starter code for now and head over to Qt Designer. So in Qt Designer, I already have my UI open, but I'm going to show you how you can create one from scratch so that there's no confusion. So what, what am I going to do? I'm just going to come here. I'm going to say new. So you can see here, we're already using something like a menu bar. So this is what a menu bar is. So I'm going to select new and now I'm going to select main window. So this will create a Q main window. So let me just open it up. Okay. So by default, a Q main window has the following. You can come back here to the object inspector, which we've talked about in previous videos, but if you haven't watched those, that's totally fine. So the object inspector will just show me what objects I have on my screen. So the main object, so the parent object is the main window, which is a Q main window. Then you have the central widget, which is its child. This is the square right here. And this is where you can add stuff like buttons and labels and text edits and things like that. You have the menu bar which is this guy right here. So this bar you see where it says type here and you have a status bar. So the status bar is this segment on the bottom. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it doesn't have the grid um, just the way that, that the other parts or the central widget has. So there's no grid here. So this is the status bar. Now, um, we're not going to talk about the status bar just yet, but essentially this is what we have. We have the a menu bar right here. Now, if I press control R, which is what we usually use to preview. So this is our preview. You see that there is no menu bar just yet. This is because we haven't added any items to our menu. Okay. So I'm just going to come here and press like double click on type here. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to, let's say, add file. Um, and then I'm going to type here, edit. Okay. My bad. This is edit view. Okay. So things like that, you can add anything you like. And then inside each one, these are the menus. So now you can see uh, this big thing. So this like collection of items is a Q menu. So now I'm going to type here and I'm going to say new, uh, maybe save, save as things like that. Let's say close. You can also add separators. So I can add a separator here and this will create like a line. And then I can say, um, open. And you can see that there's a line that separates them. So all of these guys are actions. So we can go back to the object inspector and check that, okay, you have the menu bar, the Q menu bar. Then you have the Q menu for menu file and you have a Q menu for menu edit. Um, let's just rename this. So let's edit. And then a Q menu for menu view. So each one of these guys has a Q menu. The Q menu itself contains a list of actions. So these are here, you can see the Q actions. They each have a different name and then on pressed, each one will perform something else. So now if we control R again, we can preview and you can see that this is our interface. And I already have the guys that I hard coded 
right here. So if I press on edit, okay, we didn't add anything for edit. All right, so I'm just going to close it. Okay, so my audio cut off in the second half of the video for some reason. So here I am kind of refilming the second half. But anyways, let me pick up where we last left off. So here we have this main.ui file. What I did is I saved this and I replaced the one that I already had. So now I have one working main.ui file, which is the one that we just created. If I press Ctrl R to preview, you can come here and see that we have file. We have new, save, save as, close. We have edit, copy, paste. And and view zoom out and things like that so let's start by loading this interface in our code and seeing what we have as an output so i'm just going to go back to vs code i say this in every video but i'm using vs code you can use any code editor you like so whatever you are comfortable with using python with just use that you can want to use python you want to use another code editor do whatever you like but in my case here i'm using vs code so what do i do this is some starter code i'm just going to walk you through it However, I usually do this in every single video. So if you've seen any video of mine, this should be pretty straightforward. Otherwise, I'm just going to walk you through it here anyways. All right, so let's start. We import from Qt widgets. We import QMain window as well as Q application. Then from PyQt5.uic, we import load UI. So load UI is the function that we will use to load our UI file that was generated from the designer. So this UI file that you see right here. It's very similar to XML. It's actually a type of XML. And you can see that it generates this um, from the designer. So we load it using this load UI function. And finally, I import sys, which I will use to get the command line arguments for my Q application. So then I will define a main UI class. So my class looks like this. It will inherit Q main window. Why is that? This is simply because our application guy here. So this is the parent widget is a Q main window. You can see the type right here. And then I define the constructor, so the init function. It will first call the constructor of the superclass, which is the QMain window. Next, I will use the load UI to load the main.ui file, which we were talking about. Using this load UI function will load my interface into this class and it will load the objects of this interface as class attributes. So you'll see what I mean when we actually use them, maybe in a couple minutes. And finally, in my main method, what I'm going to do is I will create an application, so a queue application. Every single PyQt5 app needs one queue application to be executed. Then I will create an instance of my main UI class, and then I will show this. So since this is a queue main window, I want to show it. And finally, I will execute the application. So now if I just run this code, Let's just check it. OK, so you can see right here that this is the interface we have designed. We have the menu items right here. So these are actually called actions. And I'm just going to explain those to you in a second. All right. So now that we have loaded the UI, what's the next thing that we want to do? Well, one thing we want to do, and this is probably the main thing, is we want to connect each of these guys to a function. Now, when you have a text editor, you press on new. What happens is that this will launch a new file and you will have to start with a new blank file and you start creating it and writing your text. And save will open a file dialog and then you can save your file and things like that. So each of these guys is associated with a function. Now, in this video, I'm not going to code these specific functions. So I'm not going to show you how you can open a file dialog, how you can save, things like that. I'm just simply going to print out new was clicked or save was clicked just to show you how you can connect each of these actions with a function. Now, in a future video, and I have one planned for next week, I'm going to create a text editor with PyQt5 and I'm going to code all these functionalities explicitly and show you how they work. But anyways, stay tuned for that next week. For now, we're just going to do like a proof of concept and I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so I'm just going to close this and go back to designer. We know that we can always use designer to get the names of different objects in our screen. So here you have, this is the menu bar. Each of these three guys is a menu. So we have the file menu, you can see it. And then you have the action new. So this is a queue action. And this is what I will use to connect to a function. And you have the action save, action save as, things like that. So how do I do it? If I come back here and I go back to my code, I can simply call self.action new. And by doing so, I'm calling the class property or the class attribute called action new. Where did this attribute come from? Simply using the load UI function, we were able to load the interface stuff into this class as attributes. So now I have it. What's the next thing I want to do? I'm just going to say dot triggered. So we usually use dot clicked for buttons. In the case of actions, we use dot triggered and then we say dot connect. So when this action is triggered, connect me to this function. So the function is called self dot new uh, pressed. 
And what is new press? So I'm just going to define this as a function. So this is a function. It takes self, obviously. And then what I'm going to do is simply print out that new was pressed. And this is just to alert the user that new was pressed. And let's just see. Let's demo it and see how it works. So if I run it, I come here and I just press on new. And you can see that it printed out new was pressed, which is the desired output. So what did we, what did we accomplish here? We were able to connect this action to a function that we wrote in our code. We did so using this line of code. So we said, when this action is triggered, connect me to this function, which obviously you can see here, it worked. Now you want to do this for every single one of these guys. Now you can link them to the same function. You can have separate functions for each one of these. And later on in the future, as I mentioned, your new pressed would not just print out new as pressed. It would maybe open up a new file or a new image or whatever your application is. So this is essentially how this works. Now I'm just going to do it for another one of these guys just to show you like how it works for the others. So I can come back here, go to edit, Maybe go to copy and I can see uh, here it's called action copy. So if I come back here and I just say self dot action copy dot triggered dot connect again. So self dot copy pressed. And now I'm just going to come here and create a separate function for the copy pressed. And I'll just say self and I'm just going to print copy was pressed. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now I'm just going to stop and run the code again and I can come here and just press copy. You can see copy was pressed. And if I go back and press new as well, you can see that new was pressed. So all good. It looks good. So this is how you connect each of these actions to a function. Now, another thing I want to show you how to do is how to create keyboard shortcuts for each of these different actions. So shortcuts are super important, especially in large applications. And especially if you're using an application that is pretty similar to something the user has already worked with. What does this mean? This means that you will find that it's common in virtually all text editors that control S will save your file. And it's for a reason because the user is used to it. So the user expects to use control S in every single text editor. So if you're defining your own text editor in PyQt5, what you're going to want to do is you want to enable this control S to save the file. So how do we do it? In Qt Designer, it's super easy. Let's go back here and let's see. So now if I press on new, you have the uh, property editor right here, which enables you to edit different properties related to each of these actions. You can edit things like the appearance. So things like the font or the icon, but what we want to focus on is this shortcut guy right here. So it says press shortcut. So simply on my keyboard, and we're doing this for the new action, I'm just going to press control N and this will save control N as the keyboard shortcut for my new guy. So now if I preview control R, you will see that it will show the keyboard shortcut next to it, hinting to the user that, okay, this is how you will use the um, keyboard shortcut for this function. Now, another thing I can do, I can do it for save as well. So save is pretty universal. It's control S. So I just come here to the shortcut, press control S and that's it. Then I can go to edit for copy and do the same with control C. And I'm just going to do it for three of these guys. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's many that we created. So we created many actions and it just would be a waste of time, but you can apply the same logic for every single one. So I'm just going to go back to my code. No changes were done to the code, just in the designer. I'm going to run it now and you can see that the shortcuts appear here. So I'm just going to not press on anything. And on my keyboard, I'm going to say control N and you can see that new was pressed, then control C and copy was pressed. Now I can say control S as well since we defined it, but we don't have a function for save. So obviously nothing's going to happen here. So the same thing is occurring when I press these keyboard shortcuts, it's going back here, it's triggering the action and then connecting it to the function that we defined. So it's the exact same logic. As you can see in Qt Designer, it's super easy to do these menus to create the items, create the actions, um, add some shortcuts. You can do the same thing prog programmatically. Now on my channel, I usually like to use Qt Designer because I think it's much simpler, especially if you're building super large applications, you don't want to waste too much time and have your code like grow way too much. So you have like hundreds of lines of code. So this is the way I like to do it personally, but if you are working with it and you want to do it through the code, so programmatically, you don't want to use Qt Designer, do let me know in the comments. I can whip up like a super quick video and we can have it and I can show you how it works uh, through the program. 
All right, so just one last thing I want to show you is something called the status tip. So we said before that we have the status bar and it's this guy right here that has no grid. So when we usually launch it, we don't see anything because we haven't written anything in our status bar. Now, what do we want to do? Well, for a specific action, let's say for new, you have the option to set the status tip right here. So the status tip will tell me what it is. So I'm just going to say create new file. And I'll show you what's going on in a second. And let's say for save, I'm just going to set the status tip to be save file. And I'm going to save and go back to my code, stop, run. Okay, so if I go to file and I hover over new, you can see at the bottom of my screen in my status bar, I have create new file. If I hover over save, it says save file. So these are also super common in multiple applications. Let's say, for example, if you're using notepad, sometimes I think it will show you the line number of whatever you're writing in the text editor. So that's also an option that you have. So that's really it for this video. I mean, I showed you the basic functionalities of how to use a menu bar. Now you can create it, you can add some shortcuts, and you can also add the status tip. And most importantly, you can link your menu bar items with um, different functions. So when a certain action is clicked, this will link me to a certain function and the function will get executed. Obviously, as you grow your application, these functions will have different content. So for example, here inside the copy pressed function, you don't want to print copy was pressed, you will simply perform a copy paste action. As I said, stay tuned for the video in which I teach you how to create a text editor in PyQt5, because in that video, I'm going to have all the functionalities, copy, paste, save, new, open, things like that. And yeah, that's really it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.